Okay, guys. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, <clears throat> this is the time of year. Fall is the time of year where where uh, people get into routines and depending on what kind of network marketing company you're with, the summer might be kind of scattered. It's hard to get people to, you know, come home from the lake and quit acting like crazy lunatics and listen to you. Then the fall happens and you're like, yes. Thank goodness fall happened. People get into a schedule and you can get people to commit to showing up at something like a um, Facebook live event like we did last night. Jenny said we had over 750 people on with us live last night. So I would say fall is a really good season <laughs> for, for that. Now, what I think is really cool about this is not only was it perfect last night the way things the way things unfolded seemed to be perfect and, and I, I set those events up by the way I'm making this up as I go but so far I have been setting those events up to be like two day events or I, I guess maybe it turns into three day events because it's like I think maybe it's the 15th through the 17th or something like that which we know the event actually is only that little time span on the original day but I leave it open because it never fails after I get finished doing the event, people say, oh my gosh, I had three more people that I wish I could have gotten added. I got to say hi to little Matt. Ma hey, Mackie, what you doing, buddy? Hey. Hey, Mackie, dearie, what you doing? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you. Can you see me? Say hi. Hi. Hi, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I got distracted by the cuteness, but anyway, um what I was saying is events like those, uh, the better we get at those, the more successful they will even be. And I was like overwhelmed by how great it went last night. And it will continue we will continue to pace it basically, uh, you know, post in there from time to time. But as far as how many you can or how long you can add people to an event, unless Facebook has changed this today or tomorrow will be the last day that you can add people to it. I'm, I can't remember if I did it the 15th, six, I did it as long as it would let me, if it'll let you do a two day event or whatever, or if it was three days, you know, the way you'd stay at a hotel for two days. You know what I'm saying? I have no idea if it was like from an hourly stance or whatever, but I let it go as long as it would let me. And so you may have a little bit more time to add people to that group, but then that group will basically, unless they've changed it, that basic, it will basically still exist, but new people can't be added to it. I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong about that. Um, I am really excited to see how these Facebook lives are working, especially in conjunction with the uh, momentum file that we're, we're using where, where you do some sort of, uh, we may need to come up with some new, new clever ideas now that we've done the guessing game a couple of times. We may have to come up with some other ideas to get people to participate on a thread and give you answers um, so that you know that they're interested so you know that they're interested in trying the product so that you have a way to um, reach out and basically follow up and get them to decide whether they would want to be on a um, Facebook live or a um, belly buster challenge, which is the next thing I'm going to talk about the belly buster, the challenge that we're doing now we're, you know, we're rounding it out here because we're on the middle of this. It's a 21 day challenge and we're like at day, 16. So uh, that's going to be coming to a close. Oh my gosh, the results that people are having are startlingly great. Like I'm like, oh my gosh. People are like, day 15, I'm 15 pounds down. And I'm like, <laughs> like I used to starve myself and not get results like that, you know? So there is something to the whole coconut milk must actually really burn some fat and it's protein that you're having in the morning in your shake mixed with your slim. There's something to the science behind it. I'm fully convinced and really excited about that. If you haven't seen the new thing that's going around, um, 
in regards to block, many people are taking one block in the morning, one block before they go to bed, and it's stabilizing their blood sugars to do what it's supposed to do. And so the first thing in the morning, it begins the process. And then actually what your blood sugar does overnight, apparently the, whatever it would regularly do, apparently the block is coming in and doing something magic. And so I'm not going to get in its way. I'm going to promote it and say, hello, that's what's working for people. I've had several people say, oh, I just started doing that. And I went down a pant size. That's all they're doing. Because so, you know, I, magic in a capsule. Wow. So I highly suggest if you haven't tried that yet, one in the morning, uh, one in the evening, and then one before, or uh, one or two before any heavy carb meal. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, I'm just rolling with the punches today. Uh, we will be doing another belly buster challenge starting December 1st. If you're within my hearing range, uh, my team, or I have a few people that get on the, the calls with, um, with us. Uh, if you're within the sound of my voice, you are welcome to be on that. If you're on my live calls. Um, so we will, I'll probably, Jenny and I are going to go out of town, um, tomorrow and I'll probably create that group while I'm gone and post it, um, in my team page and in the other pages that I, um, admin. And, um, it will be, I'm trying to think if we're, we may be a little bit early to go ahead and post the group. But if you start getting customers, you kind of need a place to put them. So maybe it's not um, too early. Also, the wording for if someone responds to what I put in the uh, Facebook Live page that we did yesterday, I screen captured some of the um, results that people were getting and made a post about it and said, if you're interested in this, let someone know. And then I said, ambassadors, if you need to know how, what to tell them to do to take the next step, check my team page. Well, if you need that info, you need to either go to my team page or ask me for it. I'll put it on some of these other groups that I'm in. Um, basically, it's just a step-by-step process that will help uh, get them started. The, there are several ways that you can get a person started. My first and foremost, here it's in the holiday time, my first and foremost suggestion would be to lead with having them join um, and then coaching them through right now, just getting the products that they need for uh, the belly buster. Now, there, I would never have suggested this before and I would have actually probably jumped some somebody for suggesting this. But now that I see how well the belly buster challenge is working as far as results go. I kind of think it's brilliant to go ahead and get their wholesale account, get them on the products that are going to give them those kind of results. And then, you know, you can lay at, at a later date, you can either let them order a welcome pack if they want, or if they just want to just continue to order products, they can order themselves a, you can order a success kit. Drew. Yeah. You can order a success kit later that way um they're immediately going to jump in with um something that gets them excited slim uh slim 96 and block is what's getting these i mean you know <laughs> you know me i'm the one that's like look we're not a weight loss company but when you're seeing results like that and you're seeing an excitement it's a hook in the mouth and i say go with it go with the excitement um encourage your people to ask their friends to, if they did if they did the November one, I feel like you should encourage them. Say, hey, we're going to do it again in December. Do you want to do it again with us? Um, and maybe have them invite a few friends. And if they do, just think of the beauty of this. If they joined in November, like I suggested, actually joined instead of becoming a customer. If they invite friends to do the December one, um, Yes. Yes, you absolutely could do that. The thing is, uh, it depends on like what, yes, that totally makes sense. There is a welcome pack that has, wait, slim block edge. They wouldn't get their 96. So they could buy that in addition. Yes. Well, I tried to figure out last month, I tried to figure out what's the best way to make this make sense. And what I came up with is if they want to do the belly buster challenge and they don't want to be out any additional money, they can do exactly the products to do the belly buster challenge. And then at a later date, once we've 
coach them in the belly buster group that they need the triplex, they can come back and do like a triplex welcome pack or um, something like that. So everybody's going to be different. Um, yes, they can buy that welcome pack and the 96 when they sign up. So um, it's completely up to you and what your goal is and what their goal is. And I feel like we should cater to everyone individually. I did put the directions of how to coach them through signing up, how to speak to them about signing up and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and if they did that, like I said, if they did that in November, it's a great time for you to follow up with them and say, Hey, what about your mom, your sister? What about your neighbor, coworker, someone who might want to do it with you in December? And if they do, they join under that, under the person you're talking to. Does that make sense? Okay. Begin. I mean, it's, this business is all about getting people to silver. <laughs> I've learned this. Finally, I simplified it down to that. You get people to silver, they get a paycheck, and then they want to work the business. So it's exciting to hit silver. It's exciting to make your money back. Um, it's exciting to have other people wanting to work the business with you. So uh, anything that we can do to help those original ones that we stuck in there in November. And that, that page is full of people. By the way, if anybody has a suggestion on how to make the next group, I, I'm, I can't, my Facebook bylaws are not sticking with me here, but what happened this last time is I didn't make it completely secret. Therefore, people like people who aren't even with Plexus were getting in there and we saw some spammy sales ads. Somebody was like, want to lose inch? Look right here. I mean, it's like some Asian terrible advertising for some slimming tea or something like that. And I was like, oh my gosh. And uh, so I want to make it to where our people can get in there easily. If anybody knows how that works, I know that maybe we can do it closed. Tell me the best way. So I'll make the next one. However you guys, if someone has a great experience with this, if you'll tell me what's the best way to do it. The event that I made for our team, it still has 4,000 people in there. So I'm like, I don't know because it's actually not easy to get into the Facebook live one you had to be added by someone. So I'm like, wow, there actually are 4,000 people trying to get in our stuff and we didn't have any people spamming any spamming. So it must be actually people that are interested and it's a private event. So, um, anyway, any, I, I'm open to suggestions on that. <laughs> Definitely open to suggestions. Um, I love to, the idea of getting the success kit in people's hands. Uh, Wow, I missed a, oh yeah. Oh, I'm fixing to answer this question after I read the answer. I'll, know, I'll tell you why I didn't see the question until I saw Brienne answering it. She said, can you take the block with the bio cleanse? And the reason I'm so smart and I know the answer to this is because someone asked product questions today and I saw the answer and the answer is yes, you can take them together. You can take block with any of our products. So that kind of answers that for you. Um, all right. What am I leaving out? Jetty Harrison. You don't think anything. I kind of want to give you guys a challenge this week since we don't have a big Facebook live coming up anytime soon. And um, so nobody has to be on the edge of their seat thinking, I kind of want to have everybody this week. Um, I want to post something in my team page that's some uh, that's just a worksheet that I post I have been using in my breakthrough classes that gets you to really thinking 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 about your why with this business and I want to post it in the team page and I want you to read it it has questions on there like that make you think you know after my life is over what do I want to be remembered for you know really thought-provoking deep questions that most of us, you know, coast through life with ever, without ever thinking about because, you know, we're too busy hunting for somebody's tennis shoes. You know, <laughs> that's life, life suddenly becomes full of life and we don't ever stop sometimes and think about these things. And the reason I want you to do these questions that I'm going to post on the uh, team page is because I want you to make a vision board. <laughs> I say it all the time. I'm like, y'all make a vision board. And then I say, share the pictures of it with me. And then like three people, y'all, there was 4,000 in that thing last night. 
So don't tell me that some of y'all don't have some vision boards up inside you. I'm not saying you've made them. And I really, if I was going to boss you around and if I was the boss of you, I would make you cut it out and actually paste it together instead of doing some, you know, I made a collage like on your phone because there's something, there's something about putting your hands to something that ignites a creative switch inside you. It makes you think further rather than makes you go, oh, that'll work. Yeah, I'll, that'll work. But I want you to read the questions that I'm going to pose to you first. And then I want you to share your vision boards because, um, cause we need to do something scary. It's too close to the holidays. We need to put ourselves out there a little bit. Um, if you want to share it on your wall, you can, but I want you to share it in our team page. And, um, it's not just those of you, if you, if I'm terrifying you now and I put you in the, on the spot because you're on this call, don't worry. I'll actually put it on the team page that I'm challenging everyone to do it. Even those that didn't get on this call live tonight. So. Um, just a moment. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. So next week, eek. Next week will be the week before thanks or the day before Thanksgiving, won't it? Next Wednesday, next call. Yeah. Our next call. Yep, Wednesday night, next Wednesday. So here's what I have to say that about that. I'll be here. If you don't want to be here, if you can't be here, it's okay. Um, I just now realized that. If if you are traveling or if you're cooking or something like that, um, there's no worries, but I will be here probably have something interesting to tell you because I'll be with family that day. Um, speaking of Thanksgiving, I feel like you should really, since Jetty just texted me the suggestion from across the room, I feel like you should take samples with you to Thanksgiving. Put them in your purse right now so you don't forget them. Order, Order them right now. So you have some three-day trials with you. Uh, and some um, fast relief samples would be great to have with you as well. Block. And take yourself a bottle of block. Pass it around at the table. Talk about it. Be like, oh yeah, I'll take this before all my starchy meals. I'm telling you that I'm telling you right now. Now you may make some people mad because they may have come with their game face and their big round belly and they'd be like, I'm ready. You know, I'm going to knock a hole in this meal. And then they may be like, I got finished like half as much as I wanted to. Cause block does that to you. Sometimes you'd be like, it actually makes you not want to eat as much as you would have eaten. So, but that's always a good thing in my opinion, always a good thing. Um, so take, consider taking uh, slim fast relief and block. Just take a bottle of block. Keep it. I keep a bottle of block in my purse all the time anyway. Right. Get it out at the at your meal. Pass it around, and uh, maybe we should do a um, testimony post. Maybe if you guys will remind me, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, I should do a testimony post on my wall because you know we'll have a lot of people answer, and that way, if somebody says to you, "Well, what does this do?" You can just pull out your phone and go to my page and let them read down through all the testimonies of people who are like, "This is what's happened since I started taking block." You guys like that idea? All right. Okay. Okay. So, so now moving on to the real reason why I, why I brought you together this evening. Um, <coughs> I want to work with you guys on mindset about something. And this is like, ee, this is one of my favorite topics and I don't touch on it enough, but, um, well until tonight, I'm going to touch on it a lot. I posted on my wall just a few minutes ago and I've, I've gotten a few responses by tomorrow. I will have tons of responses. And here is the question that I asked. Hey gang, if you use Plexus, will you add up the amount you spend monthly for the products you take? Then will you subtract from that total the money you no longer need to spend on things directly related to what Plexus has done for you? I'll go first. I probably spend 150 to 200 a month. Uh, let's go with 200 to make my point. That's less than $7 a day, and I take lots of product. 
I no longer need my old multivitamin, about $20. I no longer need skin cream or hair gel, around $15. I no longer use athlete's foot stuff, and there's no telling how much. I'm just being honest with y'all. I, I spent so much money on that stuff, and it just never worked. Uh, I no longer need my uh, acne regimen, which was 40 a month. I no longer drink pop. This one is embarrassing, but I spent between 75 and 100 a month on this nasty habit. No more sinus meds, which were about 30 a month. I no longer do afternoon junk food routine, which is probably about 80 a month. Uh, did you know that I know people who spend more on just their nails than I spend on all the regimen that freed me from all of this? Looks like I save about 85 a month by just implementing my plexus regimen. Care to share your story? Well, now I want you to follow that post. I want you to watch as people stories pour in and, um, I want to tell you a story. I used to have, I'd be friends with a, a sweet, sweet family. Who, and um, this is like back in the day, back in the day when Jetty worked at the plant and uh, their daughter, I was like um, really close with her. She's like middle school age and at the time. And anyway, she spent a lot of time at our house and we would hang out. And uh, she, at one point, uh, her, I guess her mom was transitioning um, maybe moving houses and changing jobs. And anyway, the long and the short of it was that they had always been kind of like what you would consider like budget, probably budgeting people. Well, they talked about it a lot. Like they, you know, I'm broke. They said, I'm broke a lot. Oh, I can't do that because mom's broke or we would, but I'm broke and I would and I should, but I'm broke. And so I bring this young lady to my house and and uh, she's talking about the fact that a lot of things are about to change because not only are they broke, they're like actually really broke. She's telling me this little middle school kid. She's like, we're like really broke. And she was talking about, you know, they weren't going to go school shopping this year and stuff. And I said, hey, just out of curiosity, um, would you let me help you with some of that? Because I felt like that I could basically show her some ways in which because her mom was going to give her $40 a week as a middle schooler. And that was supposed to take care of her during the week, like whatever needed to be taken care of. And um, I was like, okay, so first thing we need to do, sweetheart, is let's go to Walmart tonight and let's go buy some of those five packs of the gum you like. Because every morning on the way to school, she wanted to stop. I was kind of taking care of this girl at this time. She was living at my house. Every morning on the way to school, it was part of her middle school regimen to stop at the convenience store, get a Yoo-Hoo, some kind of little snack cake, and one of those big packages of gum every morning, every morning, she, a middle schooler, <laughs> okay? And I, so I said, let's, let's work on this. She's like, I don't know how I'm going to survive on $40. I said, let's work on this. I'm going to take you to Walmart. We're going to get some of those little five packs. You're going to keep it yourself. You're not going to like give it to everybody. You're going to keep one of those little five sticks of gum in your purse every day. And then we'll have only spent a dollar over the next five days rather than whatever. And I said, and instead of you're doing your you who or whatever, I'm going to feed you breakfast here at home. Oh, okay. Well, I was thinking about her today because I walked in the convenience store my daughter and I went to go do something together. I walked into a convenience store. I bought two bottles of water and a package of gum. Not a big, big package of gum. Just your average size package of gum. And it was $6.59 for two bottles of water and a package of gum. And I was like, what happened to the days when water was free and gum was 25 cents, right? Like, that should have been a 25 cent stop. Not $6.59. And so then... I take the receipt out to my car and like my daughter's driving, you know, now. And so I, th I keep thinking I need to look at the road, but I keep looking at this receipt because I'm thinking of the days when I was helping this middle school girl who, by the way, always thought she was broke the whole time. She was spending, I don't know, five or six dollars every morning on stuff that she didn't even realize she was doing that. I sat her down one day and I said, let's add up over a 30 day period, how much money you spend on you who and bubble gum or gum. And I was like, look, it's about, you know, she spent like $5 a day, let's say 20 days a week, uh, 20 days a month. 
So five dollars a day times five five times twenty. It's easy to do the math really quick. You're like, she's like a hundred dollars a month on gum and chocolate milk. A hundred dollars a month. Now the reason I bring this particular story up to you is even if you are frugal, frugal Francis, and you never do anything silly like that, because that's ridiculous, right? And you never ever, like ever, ever. If you start thinking Plexus is expensive, and I'm here to tell you right now that the majority of people who are ambassadors, if I were to say, boy, it's kind of, it is a little expensive. The first thing they would probably say to me, maybe not all, but the first thing they might say to me is, well, yeah, I mean, it is kind of expensive. And the reason I say that is because I encounter people all the time who sell this product whilst not realizing that they actually think it's expensive somewhere in the back of their mind. And so the reason I wanted to talk to you guys about this is because the brainwash is thick. And I'm not saying that other people actually think that it is expensive because the biggest, I think the biggest detriment that you can do to yourself is you walk around thinking it's expensive. Gosh, I spend like $200 a month on that stuff. I just told you, I actually make $85 a month because I use Plexus. Now, that's not because I sell Plexus. I actually make $85 a month because I'm no longer doing a bunch of the junk that Plexus freed me from. So, and you can be honest. I can be on, I'm going to be honest with you and say, when I started, I thought it was expensive. I was brainwashed about everything. I was brainwashed. I had never actually thought about how much money I spend on soda pop. I did it every day, not a monthly. It didn't come in as, I didn't get a sonic bill in the mail. You know what I'm saying? Like your root 44s add up to, you know, sometimes more than a hundred dollars a month. Especially if I'm taking my kids, you know, I wouldn't want to just keep the poison for myself. Let's poison everyone, right? So spread the love, make sure everybody has a diet, something or another. And I was spending a ridiculous amount of money at the Sonic. Um, Sonic people all knew me by name. They knew my order when I drove up. Like, they'd be like, hey, Lori. And uh, I never thought about that being expensive because it was only like maybe depending on what couch cushion I had dug out of, it was only like three or $4 a day or maybe $8 a day, depending on who was with me in the car. And also depending on if I had to talk a little toddler out of tater tots or something like that and be like, no, we don't need that today. No, I don't have enough money for that today. And I never looked at that like it was expensive. When I made a post the other day asking people how much they spent on their, their, listen to me, their finger nails or their toenails. Okay, by the way, this does no good for you in any other aspect except for it might make look pretty when you type. But I'm not making fun of it. I do it sometimes too. I'm just saying, when I ask the people of Facebook, what do you spend on your nails a month? They all broke it down for me. And, and originally they're like, oh, I do this and this and I get it twice a month or I do this and this and I, I do it every three weeks or whatever. And I was like, I know, but I'm asking you, how much does it cost you a year? And they were like, uh, and they were like, oh, I don't, don't show me them. Some of them were saying, don't show me the math. <laughs> because you can imagine if they do their, their fingernails and their toenails and apologies if your husbands are listening and you're one. It does, but if you do your fingernails and your toenails at an average salon, you're spending probably a hundred something, maybe 150 a month to keep them. And that's average. You might be spending like 75 between the hands and toes um, twice a month or right around that. And when you think about that and you think that Plexus is expensive, where you think that other people might think Plexus is expensive or have you even dyed your roots? I'm just saying, I mean, that's just all, all we've talked about so far is our hands, actually the very tips of our fingers and the very tips of our toes. That's the most like average. If you hang around people, by the way, 
um, who all would be like, scoff at that and be like, girl, no, I don't spend that kind of money. You need to up your play and start hanging around with people who do spend that kind of money. Because did you know that your, that your income is generally, anybody's income is generally speaking the average of their five closest friends. Take their five, your five closest friends, take their incomes and add them together and divide by five. And that's probably what, about what your annual income is. Now, interestingly enough, I kind of say that like hang out with people who make more money. But the interesting thing is the brokest of the broke. For example, pe people around here in Oklahoma, if they, if they teach school, school teachers around here are way underpaid, but they're getting their nails done. They all have pretty nails. They're getting their toenails done. They're getting their hair bleached or colored. They're getting um, waxed and they have on the cutest rhinestone butt pockets of the jeans. They have all the high fashion. They dress, they dress all of these things. And you can't tell me for a second that, well, they might think Plexus is expensive, but don't let it brainwash you. Because I walk into the nail salon, it never fails. I go before major plexus events because I don't want nasty looking heels if I'm going to wear cute little shoes or whatever, you know, and I walk, walk in and every time I look around me and I think I can barely bring myself to spend the money because I feel like it's a luxury item and whatever. And I look around and I see people who are constantly complaining about money. People from my Facebook feed who are like wishing they could do this, wishing they could do that. And I'm, I want to be like, I could probably figure out how to help you save 150 a month by telling you not to walk through the door of this place again. Like I wouldn't even have to teach them how to sell plexus. I could just be like, go to the Dollar Tree, buy some of that nail polish and I could save you a load of money. Right? Um, so anyway, I probably should get off that talk topic. I'm probably hurting somebody's feelings. Jetty's over there probably going, shut uh, uh, up. Um, oh no, he's snoring. <laughs> he's snoring. <laughs> so I want you to watch the post that I uh, posted on my wall because I want you to see how much money Plexus is saving people rather than looking at it like it's costing people. <gasps> oh, somebody, I want to just tell you, somebody said something about L LuLaRoe clothing. I think that's multi, is that the multi-level La Laggins company? Laggins? Yeah, have you ever seen that lady who does the funny video about, she calls them laggins. Anyway, okay. They have a $5,000 startup. You have to pay $5,000 to get started with their company. And that gets you your first 40 something pair of laggins. <laughs> and every month after that, I think you have to set, you have to order 33 more pair. And it is astonishing to me. I'm sorry if anybody on here sells laggins, but I will say I'm astonished by the choice <laughs> because I'm like, I, I have no idea who's on here. I can't see, I can see like four faces, but, um, so it's more like 7,000. Oh my gosh. That is a lot of leggings. Okay. It's easy for some people to see that more like a business than like Plexus business. You understand what I'm saying? it's easy for some people to look at that because it feels more like a, a storefront or something like that. Does that make sense? Because they actually are putting their hands on products, hanging them up and they get to take cute pictures of them and stuff. Um, to me, that would be very, it could be very difficult to re uh, what's the word to reimburse your money for it, especially the startup cost. So anyway, I don't even know how much their, their actual leggings cost. Oh, they got a bunch. Hang on, I guess. I found yeah. the bunch Jetty's still, Jetty is still over there snoring. He's making yeah. snoring noises. He wants me to talk about leggings some more. Uh, hang on a second. There's some stuff here I want to see. Yes. Becky says a small business usually doesn't break even before the five year mark. That's business 101. They'll tell you that in any college class. You're going to take out a loan and you're going to be paying that loan back for five years before you actually make any money. 
it's very difficult for people to make money in a startup business. So I wanted you guys because I feel like so many of you come from tender backgrounds like me, like you come from a background where you're like, maybe you grew up, you know, either really hardworking parents or, um, whatever. And you maybe have a, a mindset of kind of a poverty mindset. And I feel like it's really important to overcome that. Um, for you to realize that there are people out there who need what we have and would save money on their monthly health regimen just in and of, just in and of itself. Uh, and they would feel a thousand times better than they feel. So, yeah. Anyway, so... I want every time you think about Plexus and think about it being um, the price of it, how expensive it is. I want you to think about anybody who might come up to you or anybody who might talk to you on Facebook. I want you to think about their fingernails. That's the first thing I always think of. Anytime somebody messages me, I always think, I wonder if I've ever seen their fingernails before. Yes. <laughs> By the way, I'm not making fun of any of it. I like to do it. I think it's beautiful. Um, I, I, the reason I said the only good it does for you is when you type, it looks pretty. Cause I actually like to watch myself type when I've had my nails done. Sounds silly. I know. Uh, I actually had a girl tell me one time, she goes, I have to do it for my job. I said, they make you have your nails done. And she said, well, no, it's just embarrassing because she like worked at a hospital where she checked people in and she, her fingers were on the keyboard in front of people all the time. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, that's one way to brainwash yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's one way to go about thinking about that. Anyway. Uh, anyway, so I am, I think I'm probably gonna leave that at that. I'm also not making fun of LuLaRoe because I mean, I, I sure, I'm sure that people out there make money doing that too. It's just for me, it's hard to think that people think Plexus is expensive when there's so many things out there that you're like, oh my gosh, that takes it what it really takes is commitment you know somebody has to be like committed uh, committed so anyway okay so yes okay so I'm gonna pray over us tonight if you don't if you have a story you want to share over in the comments on uh, my wall, please do so after the call because I will save it for future reference. Um, babe, did you wake up? We're fixing to pray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you want to talk about laggings? No. no, he's good. He says he's good. Say that word more. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear him? He said, if I said that word one more time, he's out. <laughs> I actually love that video. Okay. Oh, mercy. Here, hang on. Oh, gosh. One of these days, I'll have this music queued up and ready, and we won't have to wait on me. <laughs> Do you know a good joke, babe? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> he may not know any clean jokes. Here we go. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to come tonight. Be right in the middle of things with us. Lord, I thank you for willing hearts. I thank you for 
determination. I thank you for the fire that you have, have stoked in this team. I thank you for more and more and more of that. I thank you for passion. My heart is so filled with gratitude. For desire to help people, for desire to meet a, a goal. Those things that you plant inside us, Lord. That those things that you use to mold us. God, I thank you that you're always working on us, working in us and through us. That you're always revealing your plan to us, little at a time. I'm trying to turn it down a little bit. It starts getting kind of brassy sounding. Lord, that your Holy Spirit is so much bigger than we can imagine. And the power of the Holy Spirit that is inside each one of us is bigger than we could imagine. God, teach us how to use that for your glory. Give us, give us opportunities to love on other people. God, we're about to be around family and friends for the holidays. God, just use us like an instrument. Lord, that we would not be afraid to pray over people, that we would not be afraid to lay hands on people and say, you know, I know you're hurting. I want to, can I pray for you? Lord, thank you for the courage that it takes to walk through this life in your purpose, in your plan. Thank you that you give us that courage, that, you wait, that we can wake up every day and say, Lord, I need your courage today. I need an extra helping of your courage today, Lord, that you actually just put it in us, that we can lean on you. One of the biggest things for me was realizing that people that do things that look so brave are actually just, they do it even though they're afraid. Like you just kind of, you got, to, you get to thinking when you look at somebody who's doing something that's brave, you think they must not ever be afraid. And the realization, that realization for me was huge. God, thank you for that realization of just realizing that no, I think people just do things even though they are afraid. And Lord, I just pray that everyone on here does something afraid this week. That they can have that sensation of, yes, I did it. Oh my gosh. I can't even believe it. I did it. Lord, because we can do all things because of you. Christ in us that strengthens us, that gives us power. God, I thank you for the family that I have, who have tried what we have, who have completely had life turnarounds. Like I think back on their stories and their stories are not stories to me, it's their life. And I'm so grateful for what happened with my sister. I'm so grateful for what happened with my stepdad. I'm so grateful for what happened to uh, friends and neighbors of mine because, because I was brave. I mean, when it really comes down to that, I was brave enough to say, try this, try this, try this. Lord, thank you that you've created something and given it to us on a platter that impacts people on a very deep level, a meaningful place in their lives. Thank you for the passion that you put inside of me because of it.
Thank you for the fact that I have a little niece because of it. I have so many friends that had terrible hormone problems, like acting crazy hormone problems, who have overcome. And I thank you for that. Lord. I feel like we should never limit the way that God goes about fixing a problem for someone. Ever. I feel like we should never put him in a box. We should never try to tell him how we will go about making money. We should never tell him how he will go about correcting something wrong with somebody's body. Did you know that I was at a thing in 2007 at a prophetic thing and we were out of town. I didn't know anyone except for the people I was there with. And, and we were, they were all with me. I had drugged them there. So we knew no one. And after it was over with, I was about to leave. And this lady comes up to me and she says, uh, can I pray for you? And I was like, um, okay. And she says, Hey, uh, we need someone behind this one. She's going to fall. Well, I had never in my life in a church service ever fell. So I didn't even know what in the world she was talking about. And she put her hand on my head and she said, release her from that chemical imbalance. And I was like, what? And next thing I knew I was waking up on the ground. I didn't know I had a chemical imbalance. I didn't know how severe and how deep that it was. And I think back on it now. Did you know that I didn't wake up released from that chemical imbalance? It didn't happen right then. Did you know that that didn't happen until the end of 2011 when I found Plexus? I didn't even know that that was a chemical imbalance. I didn't know what was going to happen. I think back on that all the time, just like, Lord, release her from that chemical imbalance. And I remember being like, oh my God, is that, after I woke up, I was like, is that what was wrong with me? Is that what's wrong with me? Is that why I'm, I feel crazy all the time? And I, I got up thinking, well, thank God it's gone. And I still feel crazy. Nothing seemed to change. I hadn't thought about that story in a long time. That truly did happen. And then 2011, and I stumbled upon products for weight loss and blood sugar balance. And I think that's actually the chemical balance that was wrong, among other things. And I'm just so grateful. Every time I think about that, I'm like, Lord, thank you. How was I to know? I mean, just think that crazy prayer that that lady prayed over me, that the whole circumstance felt crazy. And to think that that could have been the very prayer that brought plexus into my life. <laughs> I've never thought about that till just now. Wow, crazy, huh? Thank you, God, for crazy circumstances. Thank you, God, that I'm no longer scared to go to a church like that. Thank you, God, that I'm no longer... to scared to be around people who are super flowing in the spirit. Thank you, God, that there are people out there who are brave like that. Who don't mind looking a little bit ridiculous to help a stranger. I can tell you in 2007, I would have never dreamed, not in a million years, that I would ever lay hands on anybody, much less anything would ever come out of my mouth if I was laying hands on somebody. I would never would have dreamed that I would pray over people, ever. Couldn't imagine it. Didn't even try to. I mean, that's how far separated I was from it. I didn't try to imagine it. It wasn't anything I wanted or desired. I thought it was weird. I don't know why I'm supposed to be sharing all this, but stepping out in courage with my plexus business. Because when I first started, many of you may not know this, but when I first started with my, my plexus business on social media, I went straight to the jugular of the medical community. I immediately started posing questions and saying, what the heck is wrong? 
with doctors, why won't they tell us what's actually wrong with us? Why was nobody teaching us about fungus? Why is nobody trying to teach us about leaky gut? Why do they not have it the same internet that I have? I mean, I was posing these wild, crazy questions because I had been set free. And I thought to myself, why has nobody set me free before now? And I want you to just imagine you have friends out there who feel like that. Why is nobody setting me, setting me free? I'm so grateful that I've been set free from all of it. Like I'm sure there is more to come. Don't, don't get me wrong. Every day something new comes that I, I either realize I'm in bondage to or whatever, but thank you God that now that I can see that you had a plan all along. Thank you God that now that I can see that what a weird coincidence it is that it would take a really, whatever you call that, like charismatic church service type situation that would ever open my eyes to actually any of that, like a chemical imbalance, that God would actually remove a chemical imbalance, that he would use a, a multi-level marketing company that would completely change my family's life. God, you're so amazing. Thank you that I have my husband at home. Thank you that I have his influence at home. Lord, thank you for words of prophecy, words of knowledge that you give to your people. Thank you for those spiritual gifts that you have blessed that are on the, these people that are on this call tonight. So many of you have spiritual gifts that you're not flowing in right now for whatever reason. Maybe you're unaware of it. I just, I just encourage you tonight to start asking Lord, reveal to me what my spiritual gifts are. Begin revealing it to me, Lord. Give me dreams. Lord, am I, do I have prophecy inside of me? You know, you can have prophecy inside of you and not have to declare yourself as a prophet. Like you can, God can give you words of knowledge for people. And you don't have to be like some, you know, chartered, chartered member of the prophet community. The Lord can be like, pray for that lady. She's struggling right now. That's, I don't know if it's, if it's actually called prophecy. I'm calling it that using the term loosely, but he can give you actually I'll be honest with you. I don't care what it's called. I don't care what somebody else calls it. He can give you insight into what's going on with somebody. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you that you give us those things not to judge people, but to love on people. Thank you that when we're hurting, you send people like that to us. And thank you that every day we're being more and more open to the way your spirit works. Lord, thank you that you are so much bigger than any leadership of this country. You are so much bigger than the problems that this country could face. And that you're that you're right in the middle of the heart of the plan all along anyway. Lord, thank you for all of your plans that are about to unfold before us. I'm so like, my heart's pounding tonight thinking about it. I pray that every single person on this call will literally hit their head, will hit the pillow tonight and they'll say, Lord, maybe some of you will say, this is the first time I've ever said anything to you, God. Maybe they'll say, Lord, I'm ready for, you know, whatever it is. I don't know. Or maybe they'll say, Lord, I'm ready for the next step. Show me what yeah, the next step in your plan is. Show me what your calling is for me. Show me my spiritual gifts, Lord. Lord, put people in my path that I'm intended to practice my spiritual gifts on. And Lord, when they sit down at the Thanksgiving table and they have problems, Lord, that I would take them aside later and say, I can pray for you. You want to pray with me? I don't, maybe I'm not very good at it, but I'm willing. That's all he needs, really. That's all he, that's all the Lord needs from you is just your willingness. 
Lord, thank you for the journey. All the things that we learn along the way. And thank you that December is going to be even more beautiful than November. In Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Need to blow my nose now. <laughs> Somebody said in a message to me, you for real pierced your nose. <laughs> I for real did. I didn't know if y'all would be able to see it on the call tonight or not. I don't know if what y'all can see on your end. I've always been a little bit of a rebel. <laughs> the rebel inside me wants to drive a... A, a weird little um hang on I'm trying to turn this music down again I can't seem to make it happen uh, when I was younger the rebel inside of me wanted to drive something little bitty and red and fast you know just because my mom had told me I couldn't uh, I was thinking about that literally while I was on my way to get my nose pierced today I was thinking what is it inside me that wants my nose pierced? I've always wanted one because I thought it would look pretty, but also it's a little bit of a rebellious thing to do, perhaps, depending on who you are. Uh, for me, for me, I wasn't looking at it like rebellion, but I was thinking people might look at it like it's rebellious. And uh, so I started thinking about the rebellious part of my personality and thinking about that my rebellious part of my personality has been hands down the most productive part of my personality that has led me down the path I'm down now because it's the one that was like what is wrong with the medical community when I you know like and then it's also led me down this like spiritual like I don't agree with all everything I hear in churches I'm like I don't I try to be very um respectful about that but sometimes I hear things that I think what is wrong and it's that thinking outside the box of like, why would anybody try to put God in a box? If we can put God in a box, then Lord help us all. If we can limit God and who he is, then really we are going to really need help because we're, we're in situations all the time where God's the only answer. So we really shouldn't try to put him in a box. And that rebellious part of my personality, uh, it's probably my favorite trait. According to my husband, I think it's the thing he likes the best, right? He says, uh-huh, the rebellion of me. That's why it's taken me five years to get up the nerve to go get the nose ring that I've wanted for five years. Because <laughs> I was afraid that he was going to be like, what is wrong with you? I what? You made a little bit of resistance. I did. He said, you did meet a little bit of resistance for a while. <laughs> By a while, he means five years. <laughs> five. Well, I don't know that I brought it up to you five years ago, but it is a long time. It was a long, long time. Okay, I've kept you guys long enough. Thanks for joining us tonight. feel like I'm a newscaster when I say something like that. The Nose Ring Newscaster. Peace, you guys. Love you.